Welcome to our five-minute Bible study in the book of Genesis. We've been talking for a number of sessions about the life of Abraham and how much Abraham teaches us about faith and trust and about being in covenant with God. Today, we're looking at Genesis chapter 18, where Abraham teaches us a great deal about prayer, about the life of prayer. Now, the story begins in chapter 18 when God comes to visit with Abraham. It says, The Lord appeared to Abraham near the great trees of Mamre while he was sitting at the entrance to his tent in the heat of the day. Abraham looked up, and he saw three men standing nearby. When he saw them, he hurried from the entrance of his tent in order to meet them. He bowed low to the ground. We discover, of course, that this is the Lord and two angelic beings with him. And he comes to reveal part of his plan to Abraham. Part of it is to let Abraham know when the promised son will be born to he and Sarah. But what I want to emphasize today is when God reveals to Abraham his plans for judgment on the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. In verse 16 of this chapter, it says, when these men got up to leave, they looked down towards Sodom. And Abraham walked along with them to see them on their way. And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham what I'm about to do? Abraham will surely become a great and powerful nation, and all the nations on the earth will be blessed through him. For I have chosen him, so that he will direct his children and his household after him to keep the way of the Lord by doing what is right and just, so that the Lord will bring about for Abraham just what he has promised. And notice God says, Shall I hide from Abraham? What I am about to do. This is interesting. God always reveals to his people what he wants them to know. He unfolds his plan. The Bible says that God does not hide his will from his prophets. And uh, in, in this episode, God is about to show Abraham the judgment that is about to fall on Sodom and Gomorrah because of their sin. He goes on to say, the Lord said, the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is great. Their sin is grievous. So I will go down and see if what they have done is as bad as the outcry that has reached me, and I will know. God is letting Abraham know what his plans are. Now, this story is really all about prayer. But I want you to notice that prayer always begins with God revealing himself to us. We think that prayer starts with us. It does not. Prayer starts with God. God comes to us. He is in communion with us, and he reveals his plans to us. He unfolds his heart to us. As we live by faith in him, God shows himself to us. And then we pray according to his will. Then we pray according to his purpose. So this story begins with God saying, Shall I hide from Abraham what I'm about to do? In your prayer life, in your devotional life, it's important that you spend time listening to God. That's where you always begin. We think that we begin by talking to God. No, no, no. You begin by listening to God. When you pray, open your Bible, read his word, and then listen to the still, small voice of God speaking to you. And then you pray. Then you raise your petitions. Then you bring your intercessions. But prayer first begins with God. God coming to us. God loving us. God revealing his heart to us. God speaking to us. So always begin your prayer times with listening, listening to the word, listening to what God would say to you, and then you're able to pray with faith. Now notice how Abraham prays. Abraham approached the Lord and said, Will you sweep away the righteous with the wicked? What if there are 50 righteous people in the city? Will you sweep it away then and not spare the place for the sake of the 50 righteous people that are in it? Far be it from you to do such a thing, to kill the righteous with the wicked treating the righteous and the wicked alike. Far be it from you, will not the judge of all the earth do right? And the Lord said, If I find 50 righteous people in the city of Sodom, I will spare the whole place for their sake. Abram spoke up again. Now I, that I've been so bold as to speak to the Lord, though I'm nothing but dust and ashes, what if the number of righteous is five less than 50? Will you destroy the whole city for lack of five people? If I find 45 there, the Lord said, I will not destroy it. And on and on it goes. You know the story well. As Abraham keeps saying, well, what if there's only 40, Lord? What if there's only 30? And finally, he gets down to 10. What if only 10 can be found there, Lord? What if only 10 righteous are there? 
And the Lord answers, For the sake of ten, I will not destroy it. When the Lord had finished speaking with Abraham, he left, and Abraham returned home. Do you see the wonderful boldness of Abraham's prayer? As he talks with God and, and pleads with God and, and pleads for the city. If there are only ten there, oh, that we would be so bold in our prayers. But that kind of boldness in praying comes from first being in faith with the Lord. It comes from walking with him in trust and absolute obedience. It comes from listening to him. Remember this prayer started with God coming to Abraham, revealing what he was about to do. And thus Abraham was able to pray with great boldness and with great faith. If you want to pray like that, and I know you do, I want to pray like that, then walk closely with God. Live by faith, live by trust like Abraham. Believe God. Listen to his voice. And out of that communion with him, out of that fellowship, out of that life of trust, you will be enabled to pray with boldness. Your prayers will change the world out of your relationship with God. Abraham was a great man of prayer because he believed with God, he walked with God, he trusted God. And out of that, he was able to pray with great faith and boldness. We will too. Listen to God carefully. Spend time with him and then pray as his child with great faith and with great trust and with great boldness. Let us all learn to pray like Abraham, the man of faith. Amen and amen. I hope you have a great day today. I hope you have some great times of prayer, listening to God and talking with absolute faith to him like Abraham. I'll see you next time in our five-minute Bible study in the book of Genesis.